Hello and welcome back to the Digital Health and Wearables Show. Before I go ahead and introduce another magnificent guest for you, I would like to acknowledge our global partner Spirit Digital. Please check them out. It links there on the website. But my vision is really to create the biggest healthcare content channel for you with lots of different uh, stakeholders. And today I have a magnificent innovator for you. Give me great pleasure to introduce Tal Wederon, which is the president and the CEO of Vocalis, Vocalis Elf. Tal, how are you? Great. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Fantastic. Nice, nice to see you. Uh, we spoke a couple of weeks ago. Um, Tal, uh, can you tell us briefly about what Vocalis Elf do? Because, I mean, Israel has a strong pedigree in digital health, and you are certainly a very interesting innovator for the audience to know about you. Yeah, happy to share. So uh, Vocalis is an Israeli US based startup that uh, using AI to analyze your voice. So by purely 10 seconds of your voice, we can find a correlation with a variety of symptoms, conditions and disease, even COVID-19 screen, screening tool that we just launched. Uh, the notion is, as we all use our voice to with our loved one and ask, you don't sound so well today. And, and how do you quantify and how do you standardize that? That's what we're trying to do here in Vocalis. Uh, it's a high bar, right? That we're trying to disrupt the way healthcare is delivered. But to your point, it's fascinating. It's clever engineering, uh, out of the box thinking and using the latest and greatest AI methodology uh, to analyze the voice. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much for that. The next question that I have for you is, how do you see the role of voice in the way that healthcare is delivered in the future? Yeah, so so the way we, I look in healthcare from my uh, humble two eyes is we are trying to move healthcare, especially from the hospital to home, right? Obviously not the therapeutic, but the way to monitor, to manage healthcare. And we're trying to make healthcare as proactive as we can. And when you think about it, and, and you're an expert in wearable far more than me, there are so many new technologies, patches, and wearable that are the goal is to provide more information and more insight to the individual, to his caregiver, and to his provider. The, the, the opportunity we see with voice is the unique characteristic of the voice being passive, being non-intrusive, being very accessible, that you can raise that first flag, or what I call first line of defense. So we're not trying to say he's, I analyze your voice, let's rush you to the ER. That's not the use case. But what we're trying to say is, I analyze your voice, something is not right, or it's different from yesterday, or we see a, a predictive algorithm to alert on something acute that might happen, let's check you more, right? Because as you know, especially with the wearable, most people, especially the people that needs that, over 65, with uh, three or more chronic conditions, they don't wear those wearables. They want to have, you know, life without any constraint. So I see that voice is one is an engagement tool to engage them, and second, to provide them insight. That's the next step. You know what? We think your risk is a little bit high, your risk profile. Let's put you in something more connected. And, and that first line of defense to me is the, is the biggest value of voice, um, along with its ability to engage customers because you know, we're all using voice today and, and uh, look on Clubhouse as an example, right? And the, the growth of that uh, medium is a way to share information. So using your natural voice, to me, it's a great vehicle to to just give you the first alert about health. Oh, fantastic. A great example there about Clubhouse and also the other social media platforms are trying to do voice like Twitter, I am experimenting. But uh, several things that you mentioned there are very, very interesting. I mean, an early alert, because we talk a lot about preventative care, as you know, for many years, but in reality, it doesn't really happen. So very innovative what you're doing. I really like because it's non-invasive as well. I mean, you don't need a medical device. You don't need to use your 
I mean, your body as such as uh, right, right. yeah, so very, very interesting, highly innovative. Moving on, the next and last question that I have for you is: What about privacy, and how do you possibly overcome privacy concerns? Yeah, privacy has been a big concern with the big tech companies, right? Uh, that uh, uh, you know, when you think about us as people, us as patient, we want to have control of our data. And we want to make sure that our data and our privacy is being kept. So for that, as a company, we obviously follow the regular HIPAA and GDPR uh, regulation that we are compliant on both. In the end of the day, I'll say number one is trust, right? We have to gain the trust of our users and our customers and do the right thing for them and not abuse their information. But secondly, uh, what we do is we analyze the acoustic only, not the content. So as a result, to gain that trust, to gain that privacy, initially, uh, we asked the user to count from 50 to 70. Mm -hmm. The notion of counting is, is one, it gives us something uh, repeatedly with a good natural voice that we can analyze. But secondly, there's no private information. So you start with that, you gain the trust. Uh, and then what in, in the back end, what our R&D team is working on um, unique a methodology to do all the calculation at the edge device. So we'll not even share the voice to our cloud. So right now the voice is uploaded to our cloud. The way our technology works is, uh, which is fascinating by itself, right? We take the voice and we transform the voice from the voice domain to the image domain. We actually create a spectrogram and we analyze all the voice in that image domain. Um, so we can do that transformation at the edge device. And then we'll not even send voices to the cloud. So we'll get that that down the road. But first is HIPAA and GDPR do the right thing and ask people to count. And the last thing I'll say is today we're active. And what I mean by active is you actively need to open the app. You actively need to press the recording button. Obviously, the vision to provide the value of voice is a passive tool. You want to be passive, whether it's Alexa, Siri, your Apple Watch, whatever it is. Uh, and that for that, we'll have to uh, provide the latest technology that does the calculation on the edge. So hopefully, it's a long answer to a short question, which is we value the privacy of the, of the user. We value it. We need to gain their trust, and we need to make sure first to ourselves, right, before anyone else, that we're using the data for the right use. Obviously, if we do the right thing, that will trans uh, manifest itself for the users. No, that, that, that's fantastic. I mean, you are regulated and uh, compliant, but also it's a very interesting point there that we're using other technologies such as edge computing that you are on the edge kind of securing the, I mean, the, the data there and the, the voice. That's, that's really, really good. So oh, very interesting conversation. We could speak for hours about one question and then explore. Uh, you know, I'm, I think what you're doing is highly innovative and I congratulate you for that. You have a big vision and I know you're doing projects already with Big Farm and other players. Mm -hmm. So I wish you all the best. I appreciate your time. I want to finish the episode with one last thing, which is uh, uh, I finish all my episodes like that. It's not really a question, but it's called One Minute of Fame, which... You can mention anything whatsoever. You can mention a professional achievement. You can mention a personal thing. You can mention family. You can mention call. You can mention anything. Over to you to finish one minute of fame. One minute of sorry, oh. I did not. Fame, fame. Frame. Fame, fame, famous. One oh, fame. Of fame. Oh, yeah. famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Can, you can mention anything whatsoever that you feel like it. Yeah, meaning. Um... It's, it's, it, it sounds very simple to give one minute to mention that, but I'll say in the end of the day, whatever you do in healthcare is about people. It's about people and about users. So to me, it's a, a, my role in healthcare and the way I see my role in vocals is to lead and empower my team. And I cannot do anything without my team, which is uh, the founders of the company, physician and uh, Shari Hassan and Daniel Aronovich that actually started the technology. Uh, the team around them that, that actually grow that. But, you know, I can go for, to your point for hours, right? But it's all about people. And I'm a strong believer in people. And, and with a, a short sample of how do you make an impact in the way we deliver healthcare? How do you make fun along the, along the way? And how do you make sure that what you do is impeccable to the end user, right? That you can actually change his life 
uh, and provide value. And I've done that uh, in the past with remote robotics to place a stent in the heart uh, over the internet. And I have no doubts that the voice can serve the same way of really impacting patient, pa people, not patient, people, life, in, and, and, and allow them to live healthier life uh, with less intrusive, intrusive, sorry, uh, connected devices. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, my pleasure. Thanks for having us here. I thank you for uh, your time, the expertise and everything else. Again, I wish you all the best. And Perfect. The, thank you very much. Thank you. And I finished the episode just by thanking our viewers. Make sure you subscribe, share all the content with the other peers and uh, your contacts in healthcare. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. See you next time.